Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, citizens of all ages, welcome back to another edition, Star Citizen 3.6.2e, and I want to talk about something that I think has been a little contentious as of late. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, well then why'd you click on this video, because I'm pretty sure I put it in the title. <laughs> um... No, but uh, the Star Citizen roadmap update and the staggered development. So, I want to say, in all honesty, I think the roadmap change, although it's, I don't know, a little <sighs> sudden, uh, I, I think low-key, this actually might be a good idea. Now, before you take out your pitchforks and nail me to the wall upside down, or hang me by my toes or some shit, let me, let me give you some insight. Let me, let me give you some background. Let me give you where I'm coming from. So, if you've paid attention to the roadmap for about the past year, it seems like every time the roadmap was coming closer to one of the quarterly releases, shit would just move, just all of a sudden. Uh, and it was because, you know, they only had like three months to work on a thing. Now, for some things that might be okay, like ships, it seems like some ships can be developed in about a three month period, especially the larger ones, depending on the amount of team members that they have on it. Let me refer, I'm sorry, especially the smaller ones, not the larger ones. The 890 took a little while. Uh, it skipped a, uh, a patch, a quarterly patch, but anywho, or two. Anywho, low key, I think this new roadmap is actually a good idea and the reason why if you go and check the 3.7 roadmap now keep in mind okay 3.7 is slated for quarter 3 of 2019 as of the production date of this video it is September 2nd that is a razor's edge in terms of timelines they only have a couple of weeks 3.6 is still in PTU so, first off, I foresee 3.6 going live possibly by mid to end of this week. Followed by maybe about a one or two week, quote, hiatus. And then, 3.7 Evocati PTU will then start up. Now, if we look at 3.7, it looks pretty fucking far along. In fact, fuck it, since I mentioned it, why don't we take a look at how far along 3.7 is? Now, <clears throat> if you take a look here and compare this with previous patches, this one is pretty fucking far along. Now granted, some of these things are about halfway done still, but as you will see, there is still a significant, well, a good amount of objects, items, tasks, whatever, that are in the polishing phase. I, like, whoa. So this, although the first patch in their new staggered development seems like it's a bit retarded, uh, this actually might be for the best. Um, the way that the teams are working now is it seems like there's probably about at least four development teams working in six month increments and each one is essentially taking a patch so instead of working for three months on the quarterly patch they now have double the time to theoretically make it twice as good now of course that's on paper whether that actually translates to real world versus the synthetic idealism well that's that's still yet to be seen um, but I think that 3.7, although it's going to be light, hopefully, by the grace of Christ Roberts, hopefully, it will be in a much better playable state. Now, 3.6 has been a bit of a mixed bag for me. Uh, let me rephrase that, 3.62. Uh, when it first came out, it was absolutely god-awful. I reverted back to 3.61. Uh, lately, I don't know if they've been kind of hot patching the back end without alerting us, minus the footage that you're seeing now, which is a bit choppy. Um, but overall, my experience has actually been better. Um, 
Now, usually it's better with the smaller ships, but it's still better. Um, and that, I for one am, am, am kind of, it's getting me a little bit excited is what I'm trying to say. Um, I really, really want more so than anything, more stuff to do. Um, I've been playing, well, testing, I guess, <laughs> Star Citizen for a couple of years now, and I feel like, you know, I, I want more, and I'm sure I'm not alone, I'm sure this isn't like some, <gasps> whoa, groundbreaking thought or idea, you know, <laughs> um, but it's like, you know, I want more stuff to do that is more, I guess, specialized, more interesting, more different. Um, you know, like salvage, that's coming up in 3.8 if we're lucky. Um, FPS mining, the caves, caves are coming up for 3.7 in just a couple of weeks. They only just showed that off, what, like a month ago? And if you remember, Jared had said something like, oh, this isn't coming out for a long time. And, I mean, objectively, that's not super long. You know, a month, two maybe three i don't remember exactly when they they showed the the first sneak peek of the caves i don't remember but it's essentially just a couple weeks away now granted um the cave idea thing with all the modular parts isn't like super difficult but the the point being is that it's coming along rather quick um i personally would like to see more gameplay related stuff versus like app uh areas, I guess, if you want to call it that, you know, like, I want more, uh, mechanics, uh, like, repair, salvage, um, uh, medical, um, you know, stuff like that, I want things to do on the ship when you are traveling somewhere, uh, you know, so say, like, you want to go from Alisar to Arc Corp, and let's say you only have a Cutlass Black, well, you're gonna be sitting in your ship for quite a long time, uh, and... From my experience, sometimes when you get out of this chair, Quantum kind of borks up a little bit, so I hope that'll be ironed out better. Admittedly, it's I don't really get out of the chair much anymore because of that, because I'm not trying to get, you know, fucked up. Um, but I hope that that gets fixed, and I would like more things to do, like, on the ship. Like, I don't know, go to access panels, and maybe do, like, a little, like, rewire minigame to maybe shave a couple of minutes off. Like, you have to, you know, uh supercharge the QT from like the back or from like the the quantum drive itself and if you do it right you can shave you know a quarter of the time off and if you do it wrong you break down and you have to try to jump start it again and then you keep going something like that just to kind of liven it up where it's not a necessity but if you want to try to take the chance take the risk you can um you know repair would be cool FPS repair FPS mining is coming um, which, I mean, I, okay, I guess, alright, you know, why not? Uh, the new DNA system that they're still working on is about halfway through, so that's something I'm a little excited for too, because although we do have the DNA building blocks, it feels a little rudimentary. Uh, I mean, admittedly, it's nice, uh, and it's nicer than having, you know, 50 clones running around, you know, the same map, the same space station and area, so I... I I give credit, I do, that's that's awesome, and I'm glad to see that the new iteration of it's about halfway through, hopefully it's a little bit more user friendly and uh, more easy to customize, I mean it's not hard to customize now, but it's a little weird looking, at least in my opinion it is. One thing though I'm a little hesitant and a bit nervous on is the physicalized inventory system. Uh, the way it stands currently in game, your inventory is magical, and you can just tap into it psychically somehow, and, and produce a you know a giant gun literally out of nowhere, a rail gun. Um, I mean, on the one hand, it makes sense to have the physicalized inventories, but at the same time, I feel like that's kind of uh, teetering on the edge between gameplay, fun, and realism whereas it's leaning more towards the realism and away from the gameplay slash fun-ism. Uh, hopefully I'm wrong. Uh, I don't really know a lot about the physicalized inventory except that essentially, if I remember and understand correctly, you'll only be able to take with you what you can actually physically fit on you. 
So your guns, you can only fit two of them on you, two primaries, you know, and your secondary. You can only have maybe three grenades, only the amount of mags that your armor will carry. The same with med pens. So that I'm really nervous about, actually, because anybody who's played the PTU, especially in the early days, knows how frequent and how easy it is to get a very traumatic leg injury from essentially just walking around. And in those early PTUs, I don't know about you, but I bleed through med pens pretty fast. Um, whenever I first get in the PTU, I buy like 15 of them if I can. Um, so that I'm a little bit nervous about, but at the same time, it'll definitely add a more tactical, more, you know, make you kind of think a little bit more about what you're going to bring for your mission and what you're doing. Uh, hopefully they tie that into the ships a little bit better, like maybe the ships would have your global inventory, uh, inventory, inventory, however you want to say it, but you can then tap into to like change things out. Uh, like the, the Aegis Warden, the Vanguard, excuse me, the Vanguard series seems to have something like that, you know, especially in like the Warden, like the new one. Uh, how it has those like weapons and clothes racks. So I'm hoping that's kind of the idea that they're going for because that would kind of make a bit more sense, especially on the larger ships. Um, on the larger ships, it would make sense that you would have your shit on your ship. <laughs> shit on a ship. Uh, you know, and then you'd be able to go to it, swap things out, do whatever you want to. Um, so I hope something like that comes along because I think that would be really useful. Um, they also coming up with the what new weapon attachments uh, this patch or this round, particularly like muzzle attachments, so compensators, flash hiders, silencers, uh, which is nice. Uh, I'm excited to see that. I wonder how they're going to do the real-time swap out though, because as of right now you do it through the Moby Glass, but the way that the item looks on the roadmap. It looks more like uh, a la Crisis, where you would hold the gun up and then you could like part, uh, you know, piecemeal it or put the parts on as as you wished. So I'm hoping they're gonna do more uh, in the vein of like Crisis, because I really like how you can switch fire modes and it actually shows your character flip the little switch, even though the switch doesn't move. But hey, you know, whatever. Um, I hope we don't have to go into the Moby Glass every time we want to edit our weapons because sometimes the Moby Glass does not like to open. You know, I can't help but wonder if OCS is actually going to come online this year. Uh, I really hope so because otherwise we might be in a rough situation gameplay wise. Oh boy, yeah, it, it sometimes likes to just say fuck you. Alright, so, um, other than that, I think I'm actually going to leave the video here. I just wanted to get a quick idea, a quick video out on my thoughts of the roadmap change because at first, I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty annoyed, especially with, you know, things that I was really counting on and I was really hoping to come up, then, you know, again got pushed back. So hopefully this new quote staggered development will mitigate st or stop that all together if we're lucky but I'm not holding my breath. But other than that, thank you very much for watching. If you got this far in the video, you're the real superstar. Um, if you'd like to continue this conversation, check out down in the description. There's a Discord link. Uh, if you don't play Star Citizen, but you want to get into it, there's my referral link down there as well. Um, just come on by, you know, like the video if you liked it. Uh, leave a comment. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, I'm really interested to know what your thoughts are on this whole thing. So, other than that, thank you very much for watching. All you beautiful bastards out there, you have yourselves a wonderful day, morning, evening, whenever, wherever you just so happen to be. This has been Will, Daylight Gamer, signing out. Love, peace, chicks.